So with Rob's help, Grapplers has just released the Nogi de la Hiva guard. It's an open guard position. Yeah. And we're getting some questions in from when we asked for questions about more the strategic and the tactical aspects of it. How to win the open guard battle. And I suspect it's the exact same as winning other forms of open guard battle. So we'll make this video about how to win the open guard battle, right? If yes. you're in the open guard and I'm not, yeah. and I'm standing, I want to pass your guard, you want to sweep, you want to stop my pass, you yeah. want to submit me, you want to sweep me. Exactly. What's going through your head, regardless of what kind of guard you're using? Yeah, so we're going to get into, a, I guess, a distinction between tactics and strategy, right? Like, strategy is what I'm, my, my, my overall the approach, picture. the big picture, my, my checklist, my, uh, my order of operations. So, for example? For example, the first and most important thing is to recognize that there is a, what we call an engagement phase. The engagement phase is when neither of us have grips. So right now, I'm, I want to play guard, you want to pass. Sure. The winner of the engagement phase determines the nature of the engagement. So if you just get grips on me, I'm not playing open guard. I'm defending your passes. So, you are passing. Right. I have won the strategic you, goal yeah. of you winning the engagement phase. Exactly. But Which, I might have also done that if... If I come in here and done that exactly, and got, you so know. that's so one tactic might be to try to grab my ankles. Another tactic might be to try to grab my head, and the best tactic would be to alternate between those two attacks to increase your odds of success. So the tactic is a specific technique or a very or a very narrow approach that you're using to win a particular exchange. Whereas just knowing that the exchange, because you'd be surprised how many people don't even know that this is a thing. People are just like, yeah, there we go. Or you just step in and let me get my like. Whoa. Which Both. is fine for training if you want to train one specific aspect. Absolutely, yeah. Nothing wrong with it, but I think in general people need to be more aware, especially if you're interested in competing. You need to be more aware that if the person you're facing is knowledgeable enough or just you know savvy enough to engage in this engagement phase part, and you're not, you're always going to be, like the question's always going to be, man, I'm always getting my guard passed. Well, that's why. So what would be your strategic victories from the open guard? Right, so the first one is I want to win the hand fight. And so what would be the tactics that you would use? Right, so the, well, the, the first uh, is just like the positioning of my open guard. If my legs are in front of my hands, then I've conceded the engagement phase. If I'm on my back right away, I've conceded the engagement phase because there's no meaningful way for me to grip you. You can grip me and you can start. And I, there's some people who do this. And in gi, it's different because in the gi, if you grab me, I grab your sleeves and I immediately go to spider guard. So this is not necessarily conceding the engagement phase as much in gi. But in no gi, unless you've got superlative flexibility and guard retention, I would recommend playing a seated guard either on one hip or both hands forward like this, so the first thing you face is my hands. That way I'm never having to deal with you grabbing at my ankles or my neck mm -hmm. for free. You're always, so the first thing I want to do is present you with some kind of weaponry where I can reliably, if I've got you know, a system for, for winning this phase, I can reliably get to my open guard because as much as this is a guard, it's not really a guard. You can, yeah, you, you can move around me, right? So if I, can, if I can't meaningfully keep you in place, I'm not really playing guard. So that would be the first thing I'd be looking to do. And even if I can't win the dominant grip, the fact that you might be pulling your arms away is gonna allow me to now connect to your legs. So that's kind of the, the dilemma that we're creating is if you don't engage, or if you're not successful here, then I'll be successful catching your knee. And you, it's up to you which you know, sort of entry you use. So you can move into the like single leg axe butterfly style attacks, or you can move into the Nogi de la Hiva in this fashion. Perfect. So once you've established, once you've won the engagement phase, what's, yeah. your next, what's next in the order of operations? So now we're in what we refer to as the maintenance phase. The maintenance phase is how am I preventing you from going into, like basically stripping my control and going into passing because it's one thing to get here and then be like, all right, I'm going to try, oh crap, he's passing my guard. Right. Right. It's another thing to get here. So once I win the engagement phase, the maintenance phase is centered around, and this, is, this goes for every guard. Go, centers around kuzushi or off balancing. So the basic kuzushi in the Nogi de la Hiva guard looks like that. Right, I'm there. spending so much time doing this that I'm not even beginning to think about attacking you. Exactly. Once I can off balance you, I'm essentially breaking your alignment. So that's something we talk about in like the BGJ formula. I tend to make this point or beat this point to death in any of my instruction, which is if I don't break your alignment, which is to deny you either base, posture, structure, a combination of those or all of them, if I don't do that, I shouldn't be successful against a skilled opponent. It's rare that you'll get something to happen against somebody who's got proper alignment because people in good alignment are as 
they're, they're fulfilling their athletic potential. So whatever you're capable of doing in terms of generating force as a human being, if you have alignment, you're able to do it. And if you know enough jujitsu, you'll just apply it on it. So what would maintenance and kazushi look like in uh, the butterfly guard as opposed to the double yeah, guard? Yeah, so you're kneeling them low up here. Yeah, so I'd be shifting your head this way, extending the legs, right? This, trying to scoot under you, shift your base, that sort of thing. Right? Okay. So constantly maintaining my own alignment while rocking. Your, and with the butterfly guard, not to get off on a tangent here, but one of the most important things is because somebody's base is so low in the butterfly guard and you may not be able to deny them that, the technical stand-up motion where we threaten the guillotine control or threaten the back tape is really critical to like developing a dangerous butterfly guard. Okay. So now you got me off balance. You got me moving. I'm yes. Planting my hands. I'm moving. I'm reacting to you. What's next in the order of operations? So now, basically, depending on whether you choose to post your hands or not, I may be able to threaten a submission or a sweep. So under certain circumstances. If I've got enough of an angle and you've posted your hand, I may be able to threaten with an arm lock or uh, a triangle choke, an omoplata, kimura, that kind of stuff. Or if you're too far away from me, so we'll just use the nogi del heaver as an example here. If I get myself to here like this and you post your hands exactly, it's maybe possible for me to hit a triangle on you. Okay. All right. However, if, as I, let's say you try to turn and base there, so like now, there's no way, I'm too far away, I'm not going to be able to triangulate. However, you've shifted your center of gravity so far in that direction that as I just change the angle, I can control the levers to your hips and I can come up into a sweep. So, the, again, yeah, like, both of my feet and you're pushing in the middle, I'm going to fall down. Yeah, exactly. And so there, again, just understanding the, the, the basic procedure, like the, the basic physics of it, which is just because I want to triangle choke you doesn't mean I can triangle choke you. If I create the proper circumstances and you base close enough that my hips can shoot to your armpit, great. If not, I shouldn't be trying to force a triangle on you. I just need to come up and perform the sweep. All of the open guard and even like closed guard, any kind of guard, they're all based around that same kind of problem that we're creating for our opponent, which is if you extend your base enough to like deny me a sweep, I should be able to attempt a submission. If you extend your base in a way where I can't attempt a submission, you should hopefully be extended enough that I can then complete the sweep. So that sweep submission, uh, again, problem, dilemma, whatever you want to call it, is the next kind of like micro Sweep battle. submission back kick. Back, yes, sorry, yeah. The, the, uh, but do something totally crazy to avoid yeah, the first two. So uh, with the, um, with the Nogi Della Hiva guard, we've got a really well-developed back-taking mm -hmm. uh, sort of aspect because we've got the angle to the outside. In some guards, that's less of an option like the half guard is a great example of a guard where that's one of the main threats. It's either, I either sweep you or I take your back. There aren't as many submissions generally from the half guard, although they do exist. There's certainly like omoplata, triangle kind of threats. Right? Uh, with the closed guard, it tends to be very much a sweep or submission in no gi, whereas in the gi, the back take is a very serious threat because of the amount of control you get with the arm drag and like the cross body type position. So, yeah. Okay, so just to summarize. Win the engagement phase, win the maintenance phase, <laughs> and then launch your attacks. Then launch your attacks, right. And then and, and just be wary that, again, because when you're launching your attacks, you're supposed to be creating a, a, a layered, a multiple threat, that when one threat is being stifled, move back to, to another one, right? So you're, you're going to chain them together. I'm not just trying to make you base so that I can definitely submit you. I'm making you base or respond to a, a break in your base so that when you overcommit or commit enough, to defending one particular avenue of attack, I've always got the other one. So be able to chain those things together.